Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson. And today we're going to talk about broken authentication. This is one of the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities. The OWASP top 10 list just came out, the brand new one in 2017. And, uh, and broken authentication was actually the number two vulnerability listed on that, on that new list. So what is broken authentication? Uh, the, the essence of broken authentication is where um, you allow your uh, users or, or a bad guy user to get into your web application without the proper credentials. So, uh, so I'll draw a couple little, uh, or a little scenario up here. Let's say you have a user out here uh, in, on the internet and he wants to come in and access your web application. So you got your web app here. And, uh, and your web application, um, you, know, you, have a, you have a username and a password that you use to access your web application. So the user would enter his username and his password, and if it's good, then he gets in. If it's not, then he, then he doesn't get in, right? Um, all right, well, these username and password are stored back here in some, uh, you know, some database. So that's a DB of you know, usernames and, and passwords back here. Uh, so as he, as he accesses the web application, he's gonna enter that. That's gonna make a call back here to this backend database, and if it's good, then you get access. If it's bad, then you don't kind of thing. All right. So uh, if, if this uh, authentication is successful, then there is, uh, there's this idea of a session ID. So I'm gonna just put that right out here. So session ID that is given to this specific session. So again, the user tries to access the web application, puts in the proper credentials. Uh, those are authentic, it's, the user's authenticated. A session ID is created to allow that user to experience this web application for, that, for the duration of that session. Um, Okay, that's important because that's going to come in in this uh, broken authentication discussion. Um, what could happen here is if you have not built your web application properly, then, uh, then a bad guy could come in and do several nefarious things to try to get access into this web application. Um, a few things that could be uh, tried are what's called credential stuffing. So I'm going to write this here, credential stuffing. What credential stuffing is is essentially uh, where a bad guy has a known list of usernames and passwords that maybe he's stolen from, you know, some exploit that happened way back, you know, at, at some other place, maybe Yahoo or Target or whatever, you know, one of these companies gets, gets hacked. So he's got a bunch of credentials and he stuffs those into this username and password field of your web application, hoping to gain access to, you know, your, uh, your web application. Um, the, the idea of this is that Typically, the bad guy is going to use an automated um, you know, system, an automated tool to just stuff a bunch of these in and just try over and over with tons and tons of different usernames and password uh, you know, um, you know, to try to get in. So, uh, so anyway, so that's credential stuffing. There's also automated attacks. So I'll put um, automated attacks. This is kind of more general automated attacks. This is where maybe you would just use random usernames and passwords. Not necessarily credential stuffing is where you have known usernames and passwords. This one would be maybe you just try random usernames and random passwords and you just start stuffing them into this uh, you know, username and password field in, your, in the web application. And if one of them takes, then, then you're golden, you're in, you're good to go. Um, there are also things like default passwords, uh, which could be used, default, that's an F, sorry, default passwords. Um, and usernames based and by the way, that could be tried in this thing. Let's say, you know, you have a brand new machine and you know based on the manufacturer that the default username and password is admin admin or you know admin password or whatever. So the bad guy could try a bunch of those and try to get in. Um, there's uh, let me let me give you one scenario. This kind of ties back to the session ID. Let's say that you're a user and you're at a public library and or you're at a public place and you, uh, you type in you know, your username and password to your web application and you gain authentication, you're good to go, you do your thing, and then you close out your tab, and, uh, but maybe you don't close out the browser uh, you know, completely, you just close out the tab, and maybe you get up and you walk away and you're done and, and you move on about your day. Well, then another bad guy slips in behind you uh, a few minutes later, notices that even though that tab was closed, the browser is still open, well, maybe that session ID has been uh, saved on the browser, and that session ID, even though it's been, let's say, 10 minutes or whatever, that session ID is still stored, 
and the bad guy can open up a new tab, go back to that same web application and gain access based on the stored session ID that's still in that browser. So that's another, uh, another little way kind of in. So all of this uh, falls under the umbrella of broken authentication because um, we're allowing in our web application all these different attacks to allow you know, bad guys access into our web application. All right, so what do you do? How do you solve this thing? Um, there are a few different, uh, uh, I guess, best practices, if you will. Um, one would be, I'm going to kind of draw a line right here. So these are like the attack attempts, and these are going to be sort of the, uh, you know, the best practice, what we need to do. I'm going to put multi-factor auth, short for authentication. All right, multi-factor authentication. Uh, this is where you would use maybe a token, like a software token, or some kind of a, you know, token on your on your cell phone or uh, whatever. Maybe you use a, a you know a, a thumbprint or a you know eye scan or a whatever. So you've got not just your username and password, but uh, but it's it's multi-factor. So you could use that. Um, also, password checking. So I'm going to put password checking. And what this is is a sort of a proactive approach where you as the owner of the web application could say, I'm going to go in with like the top 10,000 best known pass or, or, or you know, most commonly used passwords out there in the internet today, and I'm going to proactively check my database of usernames and passwords and make sure that none of those top 10,000 are on my system. If they are, I'm going to shoot a little note to that user that has that password and say, hey, why don't you think about changing your password, and oh, by the way, use a better password next time. Uh, which brings us to another one, and that is password complexity. Password complexity. And this is basically where you're saying, hey, users, whenever you establish your password, you have to have, um, you know, certain complexity requirements on your password, and that makes it harder for stuff like this uh, to happen. Well, some of these things to happen, like the default password, uh, you know, check. Um, you can also have limits on on uh, uh, failed login, so limit failed login. Alrighty, what this is, is if I'm using say some kind of automated attack or maybe a credential stuffing, and I'm just throwing a ton of different usernames and passwords at this, um, then if I use the same username and I use a different, you know, I, I try like say one or two or three passwords or whatever, after a certain number, then that ought to just say, hey, your, your account is locked out now. And so you can't even get in until you send a note to the administrator and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's also uh, an idea that's uh, uh, called server side um, session management. And basically what that is, is on this back side of your web application, the, the server that, that controls all this, you can, you can set up a server side session ID manager that basically says when a user gains access to my web application and this session ID is created, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially throw that away, but I'm going to create a new random session ID um, that's going to, to be used to interface with the web application. Uh, and there, there are certain criteria that you need to make sure you have for that as well. But, but the idea is that this initial session ID is not used. It's a brand new random one that the server side uh, would create, and then that way, if another user comes in and tries to use that initial session ID, it's not used any, it's not usable because uh, there was a new one that was created on the backside. So, uh, so anyway, so this is this is kind of the idea of broken authentication, where your web application um, allows for a lot of these attacks to <clears throat> to come in, and if these would be successful, then hey, you're you're probably not set up the way that you need to be, and you need to start using some of these uh, other things to to guard against this. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are there are some things like uh, a web application firewall that you could put in line with all this that would help as well. But the bottom line is, whenever you design and build your web application and all these different components that are part of it, then you need to do it correctly and you need to put these uh, you know these controls in place so that you're not susceptible to these attacks. So uh, so be careful out there with broken authentication. It's a uh, it's a huge attack, huge vulnerability that's exploited all the time these days. And, uh, and so, yeah, let's, uh, let's be safe out there on the Internet. Thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.